So in this video, we're going to focus on evaluating our car and letting our car communicate to us. One of the common mistakes we often make is that we attack door panels or body panels uh, in areas where the greatest resistance is. So it's important to understand that with newer construction vehicles, the body panels are actually assembled utilizing automotive adhesives and epoxies to attach the outer body panels or the skins to the inner body panels. When we try to push, pull, pry, displace on the edges of those body panels at the points of greatest resistance, which are our ultimate objectives, the hinges, the nader pins, the latches, that's typically when we're gonna skin those out. And skinning and shearing are not ideal when they're not planned applications. So we're really gonna focus a lot today on talking about how to attack the, the greatest points of ease and, and access to start pushing the inside of the material out so that when we do get our hydraulic tools in place to really get our good pushes and cuts, we're separating what we want to separate and not what we don't want to separate. We'll also talk about how pieces and parts are put together, understanding where spot welds are and where seams are, and utilizing the right angles of pushes so that we make the material respond the way we want it to, as opposed to, again, something that's undesirable. On newer cars, these body panels are adhered to an inner panel. So you got an outer panel and an inner panel, and they're all put together with an adhesive. There's no more spot welds around the outside seam of this. When we typically attack these doors, everybody likes to develop a purchase point and then go right to where? To the objective. The latch and the nader pen, the hinges, whatever it is you're trying to attack. Especially on newer cars, this is the point of greatest resistance within this assembly. If I start attacking from the edge right here, I'm basically pushing against the outside of this panel against the point of greatest resistance on the inside of the panel. My likelihood of skinning this out, peeling it or shearing it without getting a good pop is really, really high. You're a lot better off focusing on the window rails in my opinion. So if you want to attack this door, especially if you've got a combi tool and you can't come in here and spread in the window or pinch the door to create a really good purchase point and get deep set in there, Use your Allegan, come along that window rail, flex that out, and create a good purchase point up here that's gonna allow you to get your tips into the interior of this window rail. Then as you start to spread that, you're gonna work your way down towards the assembly that you're trying to get to, and by the time you've opened this up, the inside of the door panel is folded over a little bit and exposed. Now you're pushing against the inside of the panel instead of the outside of the panel, which is just gonna skin out. Everybody follow that? So it's easy to get focused on your objective, but I would say look at your car, look at how it's wrecked, look what's exposed to you, and try and attack what's there and what the vehicle is already giving to you that gives you access to the inside of the panel. Resist the temptation to push, pinch, and peel, do any of those things along, along the outside of the panels, okay? If you do have spreaders, um, you can pinch these, but you need to think about how you're developing momentum uh, or energy within this, this panel and what you're trying to, to accomplish. So when we pinch these panels, what it will typically do is start an inward deflection on the door. When we come back here to force this door now and we start to blow it apart, it's obviously gonna crease in towards the victim. So if you've got a victim on the inside rear seat back here, I, I would say it's, it's a better application to spread the window vertically, which is gonna take the middle of this panel and get it started which way? Out away from the patient. Now when you start to pop this, everything's gonna blow away from them as opposed to in towards them. You also gotta be conscientious about your bees and what side out technique, techniques you're gonna use, whether it's a fold down or whether it's a rip and blitz. If you've got a lot of midpoint intrusion on a patient's hip, femur, anything that's causing them a lot of pain on that area, especially when you have a high profile car the T-bone's a low profile car. When they have run reinforced bar segments through the middle of these doors, it'll carry that B and just fold it right over their hips. A compression of this side that pushes forward and in towards the victim is not real tolerated. Uh, you'll usually get a lot of screaming real quick. So in those applications, we're gonna be a lot better off uh, removing, popping or cutting our, our latch assembly back here and then popping or cutting our hinges, making a cut on the B and taking all this material out and away from the patient in a fold down as opposed to a forward compression or a rip and blitz or two distinct door pops and a B cut. So as those four companies, you'd have your four points, you would have engaged your hood, you would have de-energized the vehicle. 
You now want to have two other things to get accomplished before the rescue company actually gets there. Making a single windshield cut, if it's going to be appropriate, is advantageous. The second thing is to skin out all of the plastic cosmetics inside of the vehicle. So on the A, B, and C post, and on the roof line, if you have any plastic moldings, pop those off so that they're all exposed so that we can identify where our hazard points are. Any supplemental restraint systems that are buried in there, the quicker we know that they're there, the quicker we can make good rescue sequence action plans about how we're going to attack the vehicle. If we have that side impact that we're talking about, tons of intrusion on the side, start thinking right away, side pull down. If we don't have a lot of side intrusion, but they are in trap, then go ahead and think rip in place. Okay, so it's always important to know when to stop spreading something and when to jump to a cut. As soon as you have gap, if you start to shear or you start to pull something you don't want to pull, rather than continuing to make a mess of it, leave the married material intact so we can make a clean cut as opposed to multiple cuts and bring your cutter in. You're a lot more likely to shear with a combi tool than you are with a spreader because of the curve of the blades. They're very thin. So it's like trying to spread something heavy with two scalpels as opposed to two big wide dimension pieces of material. They just have a much higher likelihood of cutting through the metal. When Troy came in, made a great cut. You made sure your tool applications were good. You spread from the inside out. You had a lot of resistance and a lot of very weak sheet metal. That is more and more and more prevalent on newer and newer cars. They keep making the metal weaker and weaker and weaker on the body panels and making the attachment points stronger and stronger and stronger to structural reinforce you. Okay, we now want to make a single cut at the height of the B post on the fold down. Once these two doors are blown, if we make the single cut, if the doors are heavy enough, a lot of times they'll let that B post drift away from the roof line just because of the weight. If you make this cut and it doesn't, you may want to make a second cut just under it so you got enough of a pocket to get your spreader tips into that joint and start spreading that B post down. to being maxed out, then you could come right in here with a ram. A lot of guys want to think that they've got to run their ram perpendicular to this post to get a good push. You can push at an angle. So not everybody has four rams or a tiny telescoping ram. You may have two or three different sizes and none of them may fit exactly in this range where your spreader's already at. The widest opening is going to be from the corner here or the corner here over to the B post once it's extended down. You may catch the middle of the B post. You may come a little bit lower on that B post. Just get it started. And once you start to push, even though it's on an angle, you're going to be surprised at how it's going to basically take that ramp and just kind of walk it in line and just continue to push that B down. Once your ramp maxes out, because all you have to do is let a little bit of pressure off and then walk the head of your ramp more center mass while you're withdrawing it. That's basically resetting it, condensing the distance for the push, and then hitting it again. Always skin out your okay. rubber seals okay. or your weather stripping when you're running yeah. rams because uh, they'll bite into the, to the metal. Now, if you got a ram that's got a waffle head, okay, or a smooth head, you may need to compress this with a spreader to give it kind of a flat spot to push against. If you have angulated heads or point heads like this or piercing heads, they'll grab whatever you put them against. So we're gonna put one end up here in this corner. We're gonna get that other end down close to that B post somewhere. Now stop. Make sure you don't load your doors, okay? If you load your doors, you're starting lifting the car. 
So when you go to push this, just give these a little upswing so they'll flatten out. Okay, buddy, go ahead. Watch your right foot. Good, you're maxed out. Now you can go ahead and Withdraw, release it and just move it that more, more towards the center. Now, if everybody comes up here and looks, go ahead and release this so it's not under compression. Now we go down. Everybody see this pass right here? These are the spot welds and pass welds we're talking about. See how that one's popped? That one's popped. You got pass welds there, which are kind of unique. Typically, that would just be a spot. You got more spots right there. Your B post is now exposed for a relatively easy cut. You can completely see your seatbelt pretensioner, and the doors have drifted away from the bottom of the B, which gives you a gap to make that a real easy cut if you want to make that cut. If you don't, you can work right on top of this. You have full side access now.